This is my DIY LED wave light build. In this video, I'll walk you through the process I went through to create this wave light. Once you understand the process, you can create this wave light for yourself or even follow the steps with your own custom design shape. The first step is to sketch out a plan of the measurements for the shape. I want this wave light to follow a repeating pattern with even segment lengths along the way. It will have four peaks and four crests. I measured how much room I have on the wall where this wave light will be installed. Using the nearest ground number, the length can fit around 60 inches and the height can fit around 30 inches. Based on these outer measurements for the wall space, I can make the longest vertical segment equal to 30 inches, the medium segment 20 inches, and the shorter segment 10 inches. The horizontal segments will all be equal, so I can divide 60 inches by 8 to get 7.5 inches for each length. I decided to round down and use 7 inch segments instead. Now to calculate how much wood I need, I'll add up the segments. There are two 30 inch segments, four 20 inch segments, three 10 inch segments, eight 7 inch segments, and then I counted 16 2 inch pieces that I will use on the back of the build to connect the segments together and protrude the build from the wall. If I total these up, I get 258 inches total that I will need. Often the wood pieces are sold in lengths of 8 feet, so if I divide the total 258 inches by 8 feet times 12 to convert to inches, that is 2.7, which I round up to calculate that I will need to buy 3 pieces of wood. With that, I went to Lowe's to pick out the material. After browsing, I decided that this type would be the best one. I would have chosen a fully rectangular one without this fillet on one corner, but they were out of stock for that option. After getting back to the shed, I realized one thing I forgot to calculate is the angle of the wave. I experimented with what angle might work well and decided to use an angle of 15 degrees from the vertical. So I set the miter saw to 15 degrees and started the cutting. After cutting the pieces, I laid them out on a table in the wave shape with the front faces down. The next step is to join the wood together with wood glue and nails. I did a quick inspection of how the two inch pieces would sit on the corners and made sure the nails I found would work without going through to the other side. Now this is where it started to get messy. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough clamps to do the whole shape, and I didn't know of a good way to clamp the wood together because of the 15 degree angle. So I just put it together best I could and didn't worry too much about it being messy because I was planning to sand and paint the whole thing anyways. As I went along, I just made sure that I was keeping an equal distance between the waves. Once the glue was in place, I let it sit for a bit and then I went ahead with putting in the nails. I tested lifting it up to see how strong the connections were and where I needed to add more nails. Then I flipped it up to the top face to get some more glue in the connections. Once everything was attached, it was time to get started with the painting. I wanted to keep this a white color, so I grabbed a can of white paint and started with the back and sides. Then I moved on to the front face. While the paint dried, I began preparing the electronics and LED lights. For this project, I'm using the Wemos D1 Mini ESP8266 as the microcontroller, and I'm programming it with the WLED software. WLED has a lot of great features and LED animations, and it's not too difficult to set up. The LED lights are the WS2812B type, which makes powering the electronics easy because I can use a 5 volt wall ward to power both the microcontroller and the LEDs. Getting back to the shed now, I stapled down a mini DC jack and used hot glue to attach the microcontroller to the back of the frame. Then I soldered wires from the DC jack to the microcontroller for the 5 volt power. The LED strip already comes with a sticky backing, so I just used that to attach them to the frame. This beginning part with the LEDs was a bit tricky because I was trying to keep everything neat and hidden within a tight area. It's important to test functionality of the electronics early to make sure everything is working properly. That way, if there is a problem, troubleshooting it will be a lot easier since there are fewer places of potential failure. 
The electronics worked with no problem for me, so I kept moving along. I needed a way to hide the wires in the corners that connect the segments. Since the two inch connector pieces were blocking the route behind the frame, I used an oscillating saw to cut a path in the connector pieces for the wire to sit into. Once again, I keep testing the electronics along the way and didn't come across any issues. Getting toward the end now, I decided to use some hot glue around in a few places like the corners to make sure everything holds in place. To hang this up on the wall, I couldn't find my picture hanging kit with the hooks to attach on the back, and I didn't want to wait to get the new hooks. So I got creative and made my own hooks. And with the hooks installed, this build is now completed. In the end, the build cost came to about $50 for all the materials. It looks really nice, and I would have liked to have kept this for myself. But I actually made this as a gift for my brother, who was working at the same time on creating his new desk setup. If you want to see his custom desk project, check out his video. Thanks for watching!